was also involved in landing on Mars. In, so uh, yes, it is everywhere. And what, what is sometimes I think people tend to forget or don't realize is that we keep releasing curl releases uh, like crazy. So these are single blobs for every release we have done um, since 1996 until now. That's 254 releases. We did one this Wednesday. So anyway, what I'm, uh, that's just... You know, yeah, we keep re re releasing stuff, and we're, we keep adding source code and changing source code. This is the, uh, so the blue line, the top line, is all code in curl and libcurl taken together. Uh, the red one is just the command line tool. But since the command line tool uses the library, so it's a, there's a lot of development, a lot of changes, and we're adding a lot of command line options. <laughs> that, <laughs> that not, <laughs> I'm not sure that's so good, uh, but, uh, but we do that anyway. And so... Yeah, back in uh, when uh, when I renamed the uh, project Curl in 1998, we had 24 options, I believe, and now we have 258. So that's roughly 10 a year on average. So yeah, uh, and uh, chances are we're going to have even more soon, right? Uh, well, uh, and even if we just look at the last few years, you can see that all of these graphs show uh, significant. Uh, growth there as well, meaning that we're still, we keep doing things and we keep changing things and we actually make Curl a better product uh, every year. So I just wanted to mention that it's a good idea sometimes to upgrade this, you know. <laughs> I, I don't know exactly how it is in all projects, but in Curl we have this, uh, I don't know, there's a trend, people keep using very, very old Curl versions. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit boring, you know, when we we actually fixed stuff. Um, yeah, so curl is uh, this Swiss army knife uh, of internet transfers. And one of the f f cooler things we did uh, within the last few years is that we had a parallel transfer site. I hope you all know that. So n nowadays, then, uh, traditionally, of course, if you just write curl and a lot of URLs, uh, it will get them serially one by one by one by one. But now you can use this option, and it will get them all in parallel. Well, Actually, it will get up to 50 by default in parallel. We can change that. I guess, I guess there's some... Uh, usually, by default, there's a 10.24 open file descriptors, right? So uh, there's some kind of maximum that will cause you problems. But otherwise, uh, it's awesome for when you want to get a lot of um, files down faster, possibly from leftover just lingering on your disk, like... Uh, Curl has always done. Well, it does by default, right? So you can ask Curl to remove it. Uh, remove. For example, you have a timeout. You, wanna, you really want to get this download done in two seconds. And if it's not done in two seconds, it's going to fail, right? But what happens with that uh, leftover file? If you have this flag, uh, it won't be there. If you don't use the flag, you will have a partial one, possibly, right? <coughs> so... Um, and we also have added a lot of fun uh, other uh, ways to control multiple transfers, really, or transfers in general. We have, we've had this option for a long time, uh, which, is, which says uh, only, this is a sort of a, a reverse speed limit. If it's slower than this, kill it. Uh, if it's slower than this many bytes per second for a, this m amount of time, we don't want it anymore. Basically, uh, detecting, catching, stalled transfers, too slow for me. Stop. Uh, but we also have this other one. Um, so, sure, only, only s s um, do this transfer at the maximum speed of 100k. Uh, that's bytes per second. Or you can also do, if you want to do those, uh, you know, download a million files, maybe you don't, want, you don't want those million files to happen immediately. Maybe you want to slow down the rate a little bit, and then you can do it like this. I just want to get those files at maximum two per second, or that, mean, that means started requests, or maybe three per hour, or 14 per month or week, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Basically, a way to, if you really want to get a lot of files, maybe from the same server, and you, maybe it's your server, you don't want to overload it uh, immediately. Or maybe you know that the files are just updated every once in a while anyway, so why not slow it down? And, of course, you can also ask Curl to... It, it, Ignore the file if it's too big. And this will also nowadays actually stop the transfer if it, if it downloads that much, which 
in some cases, you don't know how big the file is, right? And you might not want to fill up your disk space uh, when the server surprises you uh, Monday morning. Uh, and of course, uh, one of the bigger things I've done recently is, uh, yeah, Curl has had this concept that, that I call config file. It's really not a config file. You can pass in the usernames or whatever <laughs> in those config files, and you can do that. But now you can, because we have introduced a way. So we have introduced this new option to curl called variable. So it's basically a way to set the variables on, in the command line and in these kind of uh, config files for curl. And why do you want that? I'll, I'll show you just some examples. So basically you can set, a, uh, it's just a name and so it has some content and you can get that content from the command line like that or read it from, um, you can also, Oh, right, you can set it in the, in the config file with different syntax, but that's the same as always. So you can basically set it as, as pure content, like, uh, like this, or you can read it from a file. You can get it from an uh, environment variable, which means that um, you can do stuff like this. Well, you can set it from an environment variable like this. So you, you import it like, uh, with a that percent sign. I'll show you some examples and why this is cool. <coughs> blah, 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 blah. Uh, so basically, so you can set, uh, why would you, you set a command line and you can then expand them, of course. So if you want to, for example, set a command, uh, a name, and you want to use it in an option, you can ask it to explicitly expand it. And, I, and this sounds a little bit weird, but it works like this, basically. So you, you can expand, if you want to, the data option, as someone might know, it's, it's short version is, dash D is for sending a post, for example. So in this case, you can send the content, uh, the, vari the, the, vari the content of the variable content in here would be sent as a post. And the content of the variables host user and user here would be in the URL that it uses to the command line. Um, basically, it just gives you more freedom to create weird config files and use that to do, um, <laughs> to do more curl. Uh, and you can also, what's even more fun then is, you can then, for example, read those contents of files, for example. So if you wanted to post from a file or you wanted to read credentials from a file, you can do that as well. And then if you want to make it even more cool, you can uh, apply different functions when you expand these contents. So you can uh, JSON encode it, you can URL encode it, and you can B64 encode it if you want to in the config file. So really to help you do those weird uh, things that people want to do. For example, the, you, you get the and are complicated, more so than we want to do sometimes. So basically, with this tool, it's a, it's a really simple one. It basically just gets sets parts of a URL for you. Like this, if you want to, you can give it a URL, and you set a host name, and it'll just replace the host name in the URL and, and output that. Or you can uh, just ask for the host name part from a URL, or you can redirect a URL. If so if there's, that is the first URL and you want to redirect to another, how would the end result become, right? Typically then, of course, a relative redirect. You know, dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, blah, 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 what would, would it happen? Or change parts of it, like update the port number, or you could append query strings, or and you can do more complicated things. You can output everything as JSON, so it would split it up in different components and output everything as JSON and you could JQ it or whatever you want to do. Uh, and you can also do things like extracting parts of the query string. So maybe I want just the A component from that weird URL. A little comp uh, thing just to help you work with uh, URLs better. We also work quite a lot on adding JSON stuff in, in curl recently. So um, for example, you can um, we have this option called write out. You should know about it. It's called, it's actually dash W in the short form. It, it helps you just output stuff from the previous transfer. It has a lot of variables you can do, you know, download speed or headers or things. And we also, uh, it works like that. Uh, we recently added uh, support for getting all that data output as JSON. So now you can do like this, uh, W uh, dash W and the variable called JSON. And that variable then will spew out a huge JSON object with all of those variables that I call them uh, as, as JSON object. Pretty much, it's a fancy way. If, if you want to get everything in JSON and you work with JSON, you want to do 
JQ it, uh, curl helps you go there. And in the, uh, oh right, it also um, we have this other uh, variable called uh, header JSON. It's called header JSON, right? Uh, it al then outputs all the response headers as a JSON object. Also, to help you work with the headers, maybe script it, JQ it, whatever you want to do. So basically, you do more JSON. So you can, uh, with the, and of course, we, are, we ship HP3 enabled by default if you happen to be, have that uh, config uh, enabled. No distro has that, but uh, you know, in theory, you could. No, but you know, it's a TLS uh, setup problem for all of us. But we enable HTTP 3 by default, uh, and uh, if, if it's possible to build it, and it's a really cool way, and now you can do it with curl, and you can just, you know, ask for curl to use HTTP 3. It's called dash dash HTTP 3. And HTTP 3, as you know, uses quick. Quick is a different transport protocol. It's done over UDP, so it's not the same connection, right? So we can't upgrade from a HTTP 1 or HTTP 2 to, to an HTTP 3 connection. So they actually have to be different connections. And since HTTP 3 is still being um, blocked, uh, problematic in X percent of all attempts, uh, so when you ask curl to do HTTP 3, it will actually try HTTP 3 and HTTP 1 and 2 at the same time. Uh, and go with the one that works best. That works for, it's actually it's raising them together, so it starts with HTTP 3.1 a little bit before it, it tries the other ones. It works really well, so it's in the happy eyeball style. So we do happy eyeballs and IP, IPv4, IPv6, and then happy eyeballs between HTTP 3 and HTTP 2. And HTTP 2.1 will, of course, downgrade to HTTP 1 if it can't speak HTTP 2. Kind of fun. Uh, you should try it out. And of course, if you're using then the parallel option thing with uppercase Z, it will do them multiplexed if, if possible, if it's on the same host. <laughs> really fun. And of course, I have written about most of this in everything curl. You should read it. It's, uh, it's a lot of pages. Uh, thank you. Questions? There's a question. I have stickers. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Are those all nice uh, features uh, accessible also for uh, library users uh, in C or in Python bindings? Or is it available only from command line? Most of this is powered by the library, right? So almost everything that, is, that I mentioned here that is network related is available to the library. Okay, the problem. And that's also why I wanted this to be used the same parser. So TrueRel and curl uses the exact same parser, so they, are, they will work exactly the same way on, that your, on those URLs. One more question. One more question. Okay. Nothing more. Thank you. Thank you.